what is the real deal with the energy vampires? It is they are your soulmates because they are helping you heal a part of you that has been so wounded for so many lifetimes. And our time is coming. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever struggled with people who drain you, then do we have the Dodging Energy Vampire show for you. Today, I'll be talking with Dr. Christian Northrup, New York Times bestselling author, visionary pioneer in the field of women's medicine, and the author of a liberating new book, Dodging Energy Vampires. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about how to protect yourself from energy vampires. That plus we'll talk about broken wings, milligrams of love, electronic sundowns, gotcha. What on earth are super traits and what in the world is an imprint removal program? <laughs> so welcome back to the show, Chris. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. I also love that introduction. It's fantastic. Just taking those little bits out of the book. Yay. Woohoo. Yeah. Well, we already have an interview where we have your whole story. We may dive into that a little bit today, but I All want right. to get right into the crux of things. I what in the it. world is an empath? An empath is somebody who is sensitive, who feels things. They go into a room. They feel the energy of other people. They feel um, <clears throat> they're very sensitive to sound, to light, uh, to how a hotel room is to smell. They're very often really put off by synthetic fragrances. Uh, but there's someone many times who has been told that their way of looking at the world is wrong. Uh, you know, they're like, you're a little kid, you believe in angels, fairies, um, that there's spirits of the wind and the diva, and everyone thinks, you're nuts, this stuff doesn't exist. Or I was listening to a fantastic YouTube video with a guy named Fenwick who has studied near-death experiences, wonderful man. And he said, when I started to first hear of this, it was in the 1970s, he's British. And he said, I was certain this only happened in America and would never make its way across the ocean to England. Like nobody in England would ever be so stupid as to believe that consciousness is something outside of the brain. Now, what we're taught, obviously, is that the brain secretes consciousness like the liver secretes bile. But we know from all the work of Larry Dossey and Lynn McTaggart and so many others that consciousness is not non-local. Well, empaths know this. They're the kind of people who know something with what should be called the first sense, your intuition. And what is intuition? Knowing something with no proof. So imagine you grow up as a little kid, you know something with no proof. And what does it do? If you're told that you're wrong, then it goes into your body in weird ways. I mean, when I was um, 12, 13, I developed classical migraine headaches and uh, astigmatism and myopia and plantar fasciitis. Why is that? Because somehow I think as a, as a baby empath, I knew what lay ahead and it wasn't going to be easy, and it wasn't going to be that much fun. But I have my north node in Aries on the 10th house cusp, so I was going to go for it as a warrior anyway. But there's no reason why me, one of five children, should be the only one whose eyesight tanked, who's you know got migraines. I mean, that's crazy. It's because I was seeing and feeling things that no one else around me was seeing or feeling, and Without validation, you know how Eckhart Tolle talks about when you have a little kid, one of the most painful things for a child is the unprocessed pain body of his or her parents. And, the, and so a child, all of us inherit our cultural pain body, our, you know, so you might have the women's pain body, the Native American pain body, the African American pain body, you name it. So we, we all come in with that, but the way you dissolve it in a little kid is you ask them what they were feeling and you validate them. Well, what if you're always taught you're, you're crazy. This doesn't happen. I mean, in the eighties, I, I was told, um, your patients are crazy. I only see normal women. This was in the pre me too era and in the pre Harvey Weinstein era, 
my patients would sit down and tell me what was going on. And I, of course, could make the correlation between what was happening in their lives and what was happening in their bodies. And because I am an MD and board certified and I jumped through all the hoops and went to Ivy League colleges, they could make the bridge because an outside authority figure told them that was safe. Well, wouldn't it be better if you knew from the time you were two that what you think and what you feel is valid? Yeah. For, for myself, thank you for sharing. For myself growing up, I had continuous meltdowns because I was gifted so much from my parents. I didn't know how to handle it. My wife, Jessica, she's kind of an empath's empath. She grew up in a good Chinese household where mm. she was told, you're too sensitive. Yes. They're always, you're always told you're too sensitive. Yeah. And the truth is, for a crazy planet, mm -hmm. you know, which Matt Kahn calls, he says, this is a ghetto planet. Um, <laughs> Go, Matt. You know, we love you. I know, right? <laughs> um, for this kind of soul, a sensitive soul, this is a tough place to be. But, but once you understand empathy as a superpower, and once you understand that the time for the empaths has come, I got myopia and astigmatism at the age of 12 when the kundalini is rising and I'm about to start my period and become a woman. That's when the eyeballs warped. 2020 now is when I see clearly. And maybe, yeah, yeah. And that's the same for all the empaths, I think. If we go back to 12 years of age as, as a running coach, I think there's no coincidence. The body, like Louise Hay says, it starts with whispers. When your plantar fascia is, is kicking up oh. and you're being forced to remove the karma of your parents by hiking and pounding mountains and everything yes. else, yes. hello. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, okay, I think the most empowering thing to realize is that we, on some level, we chose all these circumstances. We chose them, not with our intellect, not with our ego. And that here's, I think, one of the things that separates me from a lot of people is whenever I get anything, like anything, even a cold, I assume that it's emotional. I assume that a part of me is speaking to me. The key here is to understand it as an opportunity to really get strong. And for an empath, when, when an em, okay, imagine this, when an empath finally knows what they know, feels what they feel, they know it as truth, and they remain loving to themselves and to others, that is plutonium, that is unstoppable. And you probably know right now, this whole year, 2020, we have Pluto, and Saturn. Oh, Mer they yes. merged. They came together January Teacher 12. and death. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. And, okay. So Pluto, the wrecking ball. Saturn, structure. Yes. South node, the past. You are going to see more top-down structures mm -hmm. collapsing. This is about the stuff that needs to go. The stuff that's under the carpet that trips up every empath. See, because we're waiting, don't we're taught to wait, right? Until Monsanto gets a clue and you know all the rest of it. We don't need to wait because okay, because the energy vampires writ large, I would call them darkness with a capital D, have been running the frickin' planet for five thousand years. And it's like the hierarchy. Okay, here's the darkness, greed, power over, you're gonna be my slave. Da, 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 da. And then so that has been traditionally what I would call toxic masculinity. It's not how any good hearted man would ever work. But males, then females, then children, then animals, then the then the earth. And that's how we've been taught when it, the exact opposite is true. You nourish the soil under your body and the microorganisms and the planet and the land. And then that seeps up to love and adore and support you. And we've done exactly the opposite because of a mindset. And what do we do in our individual lives? So let me just take you through uh, an empath woman's day. Uh, or we could do an empath man too. And that is that you are at a party, mm -hmm. maybe a cocktail party, and you're a woman looking for partnership. 
And there's a guy over there who seems, he's pretty handsome. He seems so sweet and he looks deeply into your eyes and he tells you things you've always wanted to hear, how beautiful you are, love bombing. And a part of you, the empath part that has been so um, scolded and mistrusted like your wife for being too sensitive, um, then perks up, oh, whoa, this person sees me. And to be witnessed is the first part of healing. We all have to have our wounds witnessed or we don't heal. So you think your wounds are being witnessed, but what's really happening is he or she, in the case of a guy, is setting you up to become their placenta, as it were. And the umbilical cord is going right into them. And generally, we can maintain a false persona for two years in any relationship, right? So for all of you who are in a new relationship, don't sign anything for two years because you really won't know what you're dealing with for about two years. And that's when the scales fall from your eyes. Now, that's what big pharma, yeah. big food, that's what they do. They, they make you think that they're safe and anyone who's not buying into this uh, has something wrong with them. That's how they operate, through love bombing or through numbing you with their product. So I want people to see it on both a microcosmic level, which is where every one of us comes in. We need to clean it up on our end of the street. And then on a macroscopic level, which is where we, uh, you know, where we march or where we give money or whatever to those things cleaning up the planet. There's a Hopi prayer, and I'm not going to, I'm just going to completely paraphrase yeah. prayer. It's a Hopi prayer from the elders that says, the 11th hour has passed. The time is now. The time of the lone wolf is gone. It is the time to come together and act as one. Yes. And we saw that last week in Trenton, New Jersey, where 5,000 people came together to uphold parental freedom, religious freedom, which this country was founded on. 5,000 people, in fact, the politicians came out, some of them came out and said, I want your vote next time. I promise you, I will uphold health freedom. And I watched the video from Del Bigtree and I just wanted to weep. And I feel the same way uh, with our own state of Maine. I'm, I'm finally, because I was a lone wolf for a long time. You know, the, the motto for my medical school, Dartmouth, mm-hmm. is vox clamatus en deserto, which means the voice crying in the wilderness. Oh, wow. And I felt like that for a long time, except for my buddies at the American Holistic Medical Association, mm-hmm. right? We'd go and have clan gatherings. And thank God I knew they were there. I wasn't the only one. But I was certainly almost the only one in my area of medical practice, you know, in southern Maine. Not anymore, because there are issues that have brought us all together. And then when you know you're not the only one, there's a lot less fear. And now, now, what I find is on social media, I have far more support. Why? Because because consciousness is rising. The light is getting lighter. And as the light gets lighter, the dark is working harder than ever, right? But at this point, you get, if you want to be immunized, right? And by the way, let's be clear. Immunize is what happens when you actually get a disease and recover from it. Yes. Vaccinated is a different deal. It's false immunity. So I like to use the term vaccinated. It's different from immunizing. We are, you and I, immunizing our listeners about things called energy vampires that drain your energy yeah. so that when they hear certain things or when as we start to talk about these individuals the name will pop into their head because their antibody level will rise <laughs> and that's true immunization yeah are energy vampires are people who are hoovering us are they <laughs> doing it on purpose yes <laughs> oh no i know this is well okay Yes and no. Mm-hmm. 
I learned from George Simon, who wrote In Sheep's Clothing and who has yeah. taught this um, for for 30 years. He's taught this to therapists. And when he started, the therapists would leave the room because they could not believe yeah. that their belief system was this, which we see in all the movies and Little Big Lies. We see it everywhere. Only hurt people hurt people. If you've been hurt as a child, you will hurt others. Well, that's just not true. Most of us have been hurt as a child. Everyone listening to this has been hurt as a child. We don't go out and hurt people. So the thing that I learned from him is why do they do it? Because it works. Because it works. It gets them what they want. So he uses the example, which I've used a lot, of a cat with a mouse. A cat is playing with a mouse and it gets all excited because it's having fun victimizing the mouse. Um, I had a, a woman friend, a, a female vampire, mm -hmm. tell me that when she first met her husband, the man who would become her husband, he was an equipment representative for something she was using, and she saw him coming. And in her head, she thought, oh, that one's going to be easy. Meaning, I want him, and I know exactly how to get him. This will not be hard. So what they do is, okay, now we can say, and let me say this right off, yeah. the most loving the most loving thing you can do for these individuals is get them to stop using you as a snack or no longer let yourself be their substance of choice to abuse. All right. So that's the first thing you need to know. They're an alcoholic. You're the bottle. All right. And by the way, if you're in relationship with an addict, the addictive substance turns them into an energy vampire. So you hear those awful stories of the person who goes home and steals dad's car and sells it for drugs when he's at the hospital sick. Well, that's the drug has turned someone into an energy vampire. It's interesting to me that those people I've known who've been ox on OxyContin, yes. which you know the drug companies develop that's like three times as addictive as morphine and all that, um, when they're on that medication for pain, one of my friends had a hip uh, hip fracture. He said he'd take it and he'd have such images of darkness and war. He finally said, I can't take this anymore because it was literally, it was like he was imbibing the energy of darkness. Wow. And so he stopped. So he stopped doing that. So anyway, the energy vampire ha is operating from a totally false persona. Deep inside, they hate themselves, but they're never going to let you see that. They don't even know. They've literally created, they're an, a walking pain body. They don't even know the difference between them and, you know, the pain body and their essential essence. They haven't even con disconnected those. They are kept alive by status, money, power, sex. That's, how, that's called narcissistic supply. It's how they're kept alive. Now, so I want to give you some of the ways that they, they work. Let's say that uh, you're married to one, you want to go and learn how to ice skate. Mm -hmm. But they want you to be home making meals and taking care of the kids and basically being a slave. So what do they say? The minute you start to express yourself and your desires, they tell you you're selfish. And an empath dies inside when someone calls them selfish because our whole lives generally are spent in what Mayor Chapman calls othering. Now, this is an important concept, othering, because she said, what have we done in patriarchy? We have called this attention to others at our own expense, codependence, relationship addiction, learned helplessness, it isn't. It is a survival strategy in patriarchy. And so, you know, when you are constantly paying attention to what the boss thinks or what, you're, what the, the head of the whatever thinks, that's survival. Where just like in a slave situation, you need to, to in order to stay in the big house and get fed or Downton Abbey, 
those uh, servants downstairs, you are fed and clothed depending upon your ability to anticipate the needs of this person. So we em- we empaths are very good at that. In fact, in listening to Fenwick's talk on the near-death experience, he said the people who have the easiest time dying are the ones who are focused on others and have been their whole life because they're so focused on others, they haven't built up attachment to money, status, power, their house, any of that. You have to recognize the energy vampires in your life and clamp the cord Now, we can talk about some of the ways you clamp the cord, uh, but the first thing you have to notice is the stream is running out of your body to them. Uh, Money, power, whatever, admiration, sex, it's always going that way, away from you. Now, they hooked you with the love bombing, and it's powerful. It's really powerful. Um, Because many times, because they're, their empathic strip on their brain is completely different from yours. They really, for the, and it's a spectrum, remember. So we have some who are a little self-centered and others who are way off the chart, the psychopaths. They have no conscience. And then when you call them on it, they're the victim of you. Well, I never asked you to do that. They run for the victim position faster than you could get there. Why? Because you will always Give anyone the benefit of the doubt, always. So you and and you and with yourself, you never give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You go, well, maybe they're right, maybe they're right, and and because you're always doing tick checks on yourself. Yeah. I mean, as as Matt Kahn says, we're born with an inferior ego, and we keep it alive by looking for more things to improve about ourselves. They don't, so we have to understand. They're doing it to get narcissistic supply. Mm -hmm. It's very well thought out. They do it on purpose. And when they're called on something they did that was wrong, remember this is a character disorder, then it's your fault that that happened to them. You did it. I never asked you to. Well, you know, I thought you said you wanted to come here. It's nuts. They make you crazy because you think they don't think like you do. And I think the first thing that we all need to do as energy, as empaths, we need to stop focusing on why they're like they are, how they got like they are. Can we possibly heal them? Because the answer to all of that is it's not a place you could create. It's like, first of all, it's not going to work. But even if it did, our job is to take our eyes off them. Our job is to pay attention to us. So let's say that you have a person at your office who's always coming over to bother you and you can't get your work done, but you feel guilty if you tell them to leave. So what you do is become a gray rock. Now, I've had people do this and they say, I felt really guilty because he walked right out of my office. Yeah, to go find someone else. It's not, he didn't feel deeply rejected. He just thought, oh, I guess I'm not going to get the sugary drink I was looking for here. I'll see it over there. They will. This is the other thing I want everyone to know. The minute you wake up and start taking care of yourself, they will find someone else in 15 minutes. Now, that's one of the most painful things for an empath to live through. Because you, you think, like after 25 years of marriage, you think, how could they give all this up so quickly? Didn't he or she ever love me? It's kind of devastating. And the answer is no, they didn't. So you have to love you. And Dr. Simon says that one of the benefits of his work is that he can get people out of a dead-end marriage, uh, like far sooner than 35 years. But I've had so many women in their 70s comment in, on my social media that you know this is who I've been married to. And now, you know, I have no money of my own. I have no, you know, so they really have to create healthy boundaries within their own homes, which is not easy because here's the problem with the empath. You actually, you feel what they're feeling. You feel the abyss inside. You feel the emptiness inside and everything in you wants to fill it. You've probably heard of that phantom limb syndrome where the arm is cut off, but the hand still hurts. 
It's like there's no one there, but there should be someone there and we can feel the hand. It's the weirdest thing. So um, until you really see it for what it is, one of the ways that I have seen it is the larger than life energy vampires who are very charismatic and very good looking. But once everyone sees who they really are and withdraws the energy, they deflate like a balloon. There's a, it's amazing. They've got nothing to offer when they're not the center of attention. So let's, let's talk about a few of these keys here. First off, you, you said healthy boundaries within our home. And, and I have a mantra that I've been working with coaching clients for this year. Instead of kind, gentle, easy, good, it's kind, gentle boundaries. Good. Yes. Yes. Huh. That, this is a year of boundaries. How do we begin to set these boundaries? Oh, and by the way, 22 Capricorn in your natal chart will tell you where you need to set the boundaries. Thank okay? you. That's important. That's really important. Okay. So let's say you're taking care of somebody, uh, an elderly father or a mother or a brother or sister or a spouse, and you are getting drained dry. Yeah. You say to the universe, I need help. I need help. And you get help in whatever form that takes, in whatever form that takes. Now, many, many times, the person you're taking care of is perfectly capable of being alone for three to four hours. But when you come back and they've been lonely because they haven't been uh, getting your narcissistic supply, they will make you feel guilty. So wait for some, you know, things like must be nice or you're certainly being selfish. I'm stuck here. And then what you say to them is, yes, I am. Yeah, I gotta, I've got to put the mask on myself first or I will die. So do what you have to do. What you find with these characters is they actually, they'll push the boundary. But once they know it's solid, once they know they can't get you to crack, they will go away. I swear to you, they will start calling friends from the past. Mm -hmm. They will get their needs met. They're amazing at it. Empaths, we're the ones who need help. So boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. All right, notice the energy vampires in your life, generally, let's say they're not living with you, but if, or they're a relative um, or a parent, and they only call you when they want something. This is very common. They never just call, oh, I was thinking about you. I saw this movie. I think you'd love it. No, 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 no. I'm moving on Saturday. Can you help? Can I borrow the truck? Whatever it is. But you've had this other fun thing planned for Saturday for months and the, the part of you that, because it feels good for us to give. It feels good. So what you have to do is, oh, wait a minute. I'm a person. It feels good to give to me. My little inner kid needs to do this thing. So you say, okay, so you need some phrases. Okay, here are some phrases. One, this is beginner level. Yep. Let me get back to you. Okay, because the first thing we empaths do every time, sure, I can do that. No, one, let me get back to you. All right, that's the first level. Now, the second level is I simply can't. Mm -hmm. No excuses. No excuses. Oh, I've got these tickets and I'm going to. They don't care. I simply can't. I simply can't. Now, the other thing that yep. is, you know, the, another level is we have caller ID on our phones now. You know who it is? You just don't answer it. Mm, decline call. I mean, I still have my landline. And at this point, the only people who call my landline are uh, robocalls or telemarketers. <laughs> so I never pick it up. If you're serious, you will leave me a message. So it's kind of a perfect example. I don't spend any time engaging with an energy that's not going to do anything except take from me, you see. Um, that took years. I mean, all of these scams for older people and so on take place because, because men, most people um, give everyone the benefit of the doubt and they figure that, well, they called me, I'm not going to be rude. I mean, they have manners. But at this point, they, they just want to get something from you. So manners don't count. I, or very lovingly, I simply can't. There's another strategy Dr. Mario Martinez talks about that I love, and it's called milligrams of love. So what you can, he says, divine love is toxic to a toxic person. Real love is toxic. So to tell how much love they can actually take, 
you figure out, and this is, this is good for families, you figure out how long it takes for them to go negative. Because very often you can have a nice interaction with a family member. I mean, you know, most energy vampires can be fun and there's some good stuff you can do together and they're smart and all of that. Okay, so you, so you test it out. I want you to, people should test it out like you would in a lab. Okay, I go home to visit my mother and she's great for about an hour. We have a good time. After an hour, she starts to tell me, you've gained a little weight, haven't you? Or what have you done with your hair? Or something to take the conversation south, right? To criticize you. So you know that your mother can take about one hour of actual love. So after that, you leave. Now, going forward, some, many times it's helpful to have a buffer with you. So you take a friend with you so that they can observe what goes on. I did that a couple times in my life with a, a family trip. And I just said, look, this is where most of the wounding happens. So can you go back? This is my Pilates teacher. So she knows what's in my body, what the issues are. So twice I did that. And it was so helpful to me. She would say, I see why you hold your body like this, why the back and why the hip. I can see that. So you, you take a witness that will also dilute it because an energy vampire wants to look good at all costs. So they'll really rise to the occasion. OK, with a, someone who's a stranger because they want to look good. So you can maybe do that. One of my friends said, on the other hand, with my family, I don't want to be that sponge under the meat, you know, like in the, the, the <laughs> that picks up all the excess. I don't want to be that person. So but sometimes you can go and extend the trip a little if you have a buffer. Um, so then you'll know how to plan in the future. All right. I'm coming home. And let's go to dinner at this time. And then I need to get back by this time. And then you hold steady on the boundary. This is one of the things you said to me. What is your hard stop? That's a boundary. When do you absolutely need to stop? Yeah. And that's gracious. That's a gracious thing to do. They don't do that. In a family gathering where we're stuck, there's no way we can get out of it. I was using a Star yeah. Trek analogy. Is there a way to put up our shield, Sulu? First thing you do, drop a cord from your sacrum right down to the center of the earth. Okay, so let's drop that cord right down to the center of the earth. Then open your crown, bring in all of divine love from heaven right into your body. So now see the cord from the center of the earth coming up into your body and then heaven's force coming downward into your body. And then like a balloon all around you, 360 degrees as far out as your arms, Send, push, push that light out from the earth and from the sky. Push that light out 360 degrees of divine love, not personal love, from the earth, from the sky, from God. 360 degree orb around you. And then give it a little turger, like you just blew up the balloon so that any darkness just bounces off. Yeah. So that's a good one. Just do that before you even go in the room. Uh, you can also do, uh, Dina Spear, one of my energy healer friends says, you can just see an ice cream cone shape energy where the, the cone part goes deep into the earth where there are crystals. And then a kind of amber liquid comes up from the center of the earth around your feet and makes uh, eventually fills, fills, fills a cone over your head. So like it's an ice cream cone shape. And I've done that in the airport. Now, you know, you know how you're in the airport and there's someone you don't want to see. And the minute you don't want to see them, this is the stickiness of darkness. So you don't want to see them. So, of course, you see them all the way from Portland, Maine to Seattle. They're in the ladies room with you. They go, they stop at the same restaurant. If you do this energy egg thing, I have found then they're they're not there. They go away. How do we clear old energy or get it off of us afterwards? Oh, well, you know, you can just see literally. Here's what I do because it's easy. I accept divine love. I, I just put my hands together, right and left hemisphere together. I accept divine love. I breathe in through my nose. Hold it. Pulse it out. There, that's it. I accept divine love. It connects you back with divine love. 
and that'll clear it. The other thing that I've found, if you've got something that's really sticking, 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 and no matter what you do, eh, you still feel it in your throat, in your heart, whatever, then you do that imprint removal thing that I talk about in the book. And that is one of the most effective things. I did it with myself in the car before coming into the house the other night. Okay, so what you do is the first thing you do is you just say, if there are any dark or wandering energies around me with Archangel Michael's cobalt blue uh, sort of light, I cut any dark or wandering energies around me. Okay, so you just sort of see that happening. And then, uh, and then you say, if there are any dark or wandering energies, I send them away and I banish them from returning. Okay, so you've done your prep and drape, as it were. Okay, then you notice where you're feeling the, uh, you know, your heart. It's usually the heart, can be the throat or the abdomen. So you're feeling that around a certain person. You see that person sitting in front of you. And this is where you really have to feel the feeling. So, John, I forgive you for abandoning me and my children, for forcing me to pay tuition, and I send you on your path of healing, or I forgive you for, and you've really got to feel it. It will not work to do the spiritual bypass, to do the shit cake, honey covered, oh, we're all one, and da, 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 da. No, you got to get down and dirty. So you, you use four letter words, whatever. I forgive you and I send you on your path of healing. Then you go and I forgive myself for not believing in my need to have safety and security, for not believing that I deserve love too, for not believing in my own beauty and my own worth. Then, okay, then you say, I'm ready to, when you're ready. Because when you felt the emotion and you cry a little or you're angry, are you ready to transmute this in the violet flame? I'm ready to transmute this. So then you say, I now transmute this in the violet flame of St. Germain. Just Google that if you want to know more. There's a lot. And then see yourself sitting in a violet flame. Just see yourself sitting there. And I guarantee you that that person you've just done the imprint removal on will do one of three things. They will, if they're a true soulmate, they'll jump in the flame with you and cheer you on. Second thing, they will kneel in front of that fire and weep in contrition and remorse. And by the way, energy vampires almost never have contrition or remorse. Uh, third thing they do, run for the hills. So just run for the hills. And this is where you want to do your work. Otherwise, you're going to come back as identical twins. That's what I tell people. So they oh do this work. Yeah. And then you um, pack the wound, because you've just done psychic surgery, with midnight blue and golden light. Mm. And many, many people are so tired, they have to go and take a nap. This is real surgery. And I learned this from Peter Calhoun, uh, a shaman who had been an Episcopal priest. And I'm telling you, it is so fast and effective. Thank you. What do we do for those people who are listening? And, and, and we've discussed it before. I was in a six and a half year relationship with a, uh, a, a not class B, something, uh, there was a term B. Uh, cluster kind of, B. With cluster a cluster B, B in the in individual. When yeah. we have that individual in our lives and we're married to them, we're attached to them, we're a partner of them, what do we do? Yeah. What you do is, first of all, you congratulate yourself for <laughs> listening to this podcast you must educate yourself. You must know what you're dealing with. That is the first thing. Second, you need to manage your super traits. And you mentioned super traits. So this is a group of <laughs> traits that uh, uh, certain, those of us who uh, kind of attract the energy vampires have. And that is loyalty, um, perseverance, uh, stick-to-itiveness, um, practicality, everything necessary to launch a business to run a hospital, to get an MD degree. Okay, except that we think the thing that allowed us to be so good at work does not work with one of these people. We choose the ones that we fall in love with their potential, and therefore we think if we fan the flames of their potential, we can save them, we can make them feel better. We can, so we give them money and we give them whatever. So Remember, and this is an old sports caster, and I don't know the name, said potential means you ain't done shit yet. OK, so we need to manage our traits yeah. and then we need to have a couple friends who can see it before we do. You, you've got to have somebody you can bounce this off of who understands 
most marriage and family therapists have not understood this at all. So the energy vampire has done all kinds of couch time. They can talk any therapist anywhere into thinking that they get it because they know what you want to hear. So just know what you're dealing with. Allow it to dawn on you. Get involved in a narcissistic abuse recovery program. And then you'll find other people who've been there and you can call them when, you know, would you believe what he did or was this normal? Because you're always going to doubt yourself. So you have a group of people who are reality checks who've been there and they'll tell you, yeah, nope, what he just did there. No, there's nothing wrong with you. That was da da da. And then you can eventually make your plan. The best generally is no contact. You got to like cut it off. No contact. And by the way, they never go away. On some, in some regard, they never go away. I, I just heard from a bunch of them, you know, this just past year. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it's like, we're, you should go away. Tell us about how we can use Mother Earth to help us. We were talking about celery juice at the beginning of this thing. It's the people who come to you, my guess is 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 have been hoovered. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first thing we do is we realize... No, no, no. The Hoover is you have allowed that because you didn't know any better because you're healing seven generations of people before you. All right. So there's nothing wrong with you. You weren't stupid. You weren't any of that stuff. Okay, that's really important for us because, man, you can lose your self-esteem and get down on yourself and all the rest of it very easily. That's what they count on. Okay, because then they've kind of got you. Then, they you know, can't then, prey on you if you're strong. No, they can't. And then the next one comes along, right? And it, and you notice it, it doesn't take you 10 years to figure it out. It takes you five. And so you got to congratulate yourself for every time you noticed it. <laughs> every time you noticed it and got out. So your recovery comes from noticing it sooner every time until finally you see that there's a character that you want to make excuses for who seems so charismatic and they're going to come in and they're going to work with your organization or they're going to date you or whatever it is, or they're going to save your foundation, whatever it is. And a little part of you goes, hmm, I wonder. And you start to see the red flags much, much earlier. Because here's the thing. What is the real deal here with the energy vampires? It is they are your soulmates because they are helping you heal a part of you that has been so wounded for so many lifetimes. And our time has come and you've got to take care of that little wounded kid inside. You need to be the adult. No one's going to come along and save you. No one is. I can attest to that. And if you think that they have in any way or form, you could be at risk for creating a situation that's an energy vampire where all of your energy is being taken up, you know, kind of trying to revive uh, an, um, a household or his children or whatever it is. So you need to come first and you need to have someone who can celebrate that with you, who can, because so many people are lined up ready to tell you that you're not doing enough. Because that's what you tell yourself. I should be able to, okay, that's the mantra of us. I should be able to, um, you know, get a PhD, um, cook perfect organic meals, and never use a plastic bag. (laughs) You know? (laughs) So each one of us, if we're an empath, if we're an old soul, if we're attracted and actually made it this far in the interview, then we are a, (laughs) we're a light worker. (laughs) We are light workers. What's that mean and how do we stand in the light? Okay, good. A light worker is somebody who just has a lot of light from being on the planet over and over and over. So that has created so much experience. And so we are natural air purifiers. We have very positive energy. We walk into a room or in the New York City subway and our energy cleans it up. Have you seen those YouTube ads with the... um, metronomes i mean not ads but youtube videos go watch one if okay. you start a hundred metronomes that 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 oh da, yes they'll come da, into da, sync da, of course da, they'll come into sync well what do we go into sync with the highest vibration we're always drawn to the highest vibration so when you keep your vibration high 
people want to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. They're very interested. Now, the energy vampires will try to keep it low because remember, they feed on anger and fear, like that ad that you saw. What is that feeding on? Anger and fear. Okay, so stop feeding them. Go high. Just go high because so, you're there anyway. And, and you don't have to do anything to prove your worth. You just have to walk into a room. You, by being there, are doing more than enough. You're purifying the, the atmosphere. Woohoo! Right? So where can people go to find your beautiful book and find out more? For me, drnorthrop.com. Yep. All right. We've, we've got to bring this to a close. We're going to have you back at some point. I, I love you so much, Chris. This is awesome. Two last things, and then we'll do a, a brief meditation. Uh, well, actually, okay. one last thing in a brief meditation. Uh, last words of wisdom to help people protect themselves from energy vampires. Just know what you're dealing with. Knowledge is power and learn how to say no. Woohoo! Yeah. And then would you mind leading us in a brief, whatever you feel called to from the angels, guided meditation to help us with energy vampires? All right. So I want you to take a breath in slowly through your nose and all the way out through your nose, which is going to entrain your parasympathetic rest and restore nervous system. Let's take another deep breath in and let it out slowly. I'm going to slow everything down. And now a third deep breath. And out. Now I want you to notice there is a door on your heart. And take a look at what kind it is. And now open that door. Just let love flow. Let love flow up to your head. Down your body to your feet and up and around. Let love flow to your arms, to your legs. Let love flow outward to the oceans, to the butterflies, to the trees. Let love flow to all the waters on the planet. Just let love flow. And now I want you to open that door on your heart inward, inward, and let love flow back to you, filling up your heart from everyone who loves you from the insects, from the trees, from the oceans, from the clouds and the stars, from Mother Earth, from everyone listening now or in the future. Let love flow. Take another deep breath in. Let it out. Let love flow in until your heart is absolutely full and you know your worth, your value, without any doubt. And now, being so full of love, say the following prayer. Let everything that needs to go, go. Let everything that needs to come, come. I am strength. I am love. I am more than enough. Now a deep breath in through your nose again. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And open your eyes. Hmm. Good. Woohoo! <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Chris. This has been beautiful, wonderful, important. This is one of those important on many, many levels. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for being a light warrior, a love warrior, right there with that mountain lion at our backs, roaring for us to really take it up a notch in 2020. We Thank have you. to. We get to. It's our honor. Thank That's right. You. Thank you. Okay. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get dodging energy vampires, and begin standing in the light again today and shine bright. Woohoo!
<laughs> Great. You outdid yourself, Chris. You really did. Thank you. That's because you elicited it from me. Thank you. I hope you learned as much about dodging energy vampires as I did in this beautiful, beautiful interview with my dear, dear friend, Dr. Christian Northrup. To check out more incredible interviews, click here, subscribe below, and be sure to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows. Love you guys. Shine bright.